This conference will now be recorded. Welcome in, everybody. This lecture, we are going to be talking about creating different pressure dressings specifically for extremity use. So we have a patient, we have a 24 year old male patient, um, cut their arm on a fence and we got a deep, short laceration on the lower portion of the arm. So I got my BSI on, my scene is safe. I introduce myself to my patient. I have an isolated injury, heavy amount of bleeding coming from here, but it's not so substantial that I think that I immediately have to apply a tourniquet application at this point. My gloves are on. I go ahead and select my gauze. Remember, gauze comes in a variety of different sizes, two by twos all the way up to our multi-system trauma dressing, which is 10 by 30. I've identified my site of bleeding because I exposed that arm, found it. If it looks dirty, I can go ahead and cleanse it. If not, not a big deal if you cleanse that wound, only if it's dirty. So apply direct pressure onto that wound and make sure that the bleeding is stopped. Remember, if I take my hand off and this entire gauze pad is saturated with blood, never remove that gauze pad because when I remove that gauze pad, I'm destroying and taking out all of the clots that I created by applying that direct pressure. So instead, I'm gonna take another gauze pad and put it directly over this gauze in the event that it does get saturated. So let's go ahead and dress this wound, creating a pressure dressing. So I have two clings. I'm gonna take one cling, still rolled up. I'm gonna go ahead and put it directly over the gauze, which is directly over the injury site. Next, I'm gonna take a second cling and I'm gonna start rolling it on in order to dress that wound. So with that rolled up cling, what it's doing is it's allowing and directing all of the pressure that I'm putting on by rolling this other cling on to control that bleed. And then also I have a lot more absorbent material that's associated with it. Continue to roll that cling on. And then go ahead and tape it into place, <laughs> secure it, recheck your CMS before and afterwards of anything that you're actually wrapping around that patient. So again, this is a really good example. And you got that deeper, shorter laceration. Now let's say our patient, again, tore their arm on a fence and it's a very deep, long laceration. So I'm gonna do the same things. I'm gonna take BSI, ensure my scene is safe. I'm gonna go through my patient assessment Eventually, I'm going to identify the fact that this is an isolated injury, substantial bleed, but not so severe that I immediately need to take tourniquet application control. So I'm going to take my gauze dressings. I'm going to place that up and down the patient's arm. So I'm entirely covering up that bleed. I'm going to start applying direct pressure. Once I think I got bleeding controlled, I'm going to take my ACE bandage. And I rolled on twice. Now, every time that I'm over that injury site, I'm going to twist. So those twists are directing all of the pressure on top of that wound. And it's also starting to tint the skin together. So now I got pressure, that skin's starting to tint together. Once I get to the end of that ACE bandage, go ahead and secure it, recheck your CMS, make sure that you're not bleeding through. If you're bleeding through on something like this, you might have to go ahead and go do that tourniquet application. So that does it for a couple of those examples of utilizing that for pressure dressings. So it's not just the arms that you can utilize that for, lower extremities as well, both of those applications work very nicely. Thanks everybody.